sir. Now I would like to invite Professor Himanshu Rai, director I am Indore, to inaugurate this FDP and give the keynote address. He is an alumnus of IIM Ahmedabad and NITK Suratkal and recipient of the coveted NTSC Scholarship and Infosys Fellowship. Under his leadership, I am Indore got the triple crown accreditation of AMBA, AACSB, and ICFIS, making it one of the 90 odd institutions in the world to have this honor. He is spearheading multiple initiatives at I am Indore to create significant social impact for addressing various challenges faced by the country. Prior to this, he has been the Dean of SDA Bocconi, India Campus Professor at SDA Bocconi, Milan, and has taught at I am Lucknow and XLRI Jamshed. He has published extensively and his current areas of research include negotiation, ethical leadership, cross-cultural issues, management and religion, spirituality, gender and influence tactics. Through his initiative, gender and educational background parity was achieved by IMN. All the IMs, Professor Rai loves adventure, particularly mountaineering and trekking and has over a dozen expeditions to his credit. He is a voracious reader, yoga teacher, and a connoisseur of music. His TED Talks on ethical leadership, lessons from the Vedas, won him several eclodes the world over. I welcome you. Thank you very much, uh, Nina, and a very good morning to everyone, all the participants. Now, Vice Chancellor Varma has already set the tone by saying that today, although we are going through the ravages of the pandemic. The pandemic also throws in certain opportunities. And given that uh, we have uh, essentially faculty from uh, multiple functional areas over here, I would like to focus today in my inaugural address on what is it that the future is going to look like and what can we as a faculty do? So first of all, you know, the world is going to change any which way. Whether it was for COVID-19 or not, the world was changing because of the fourth industrial revolution. Artificial intelligence is here, whether we want it or not, whether we like it or not. Dreams are becoming a reality. Of course, this particular dream turned out to be a nightmare. But once this nightmare is over, we are going to see several dreams turning into reality. Robotics are going to take over a lot of jobs. And therefore, what we as faculty, what we as institutions have to do is to be future ready. Now, what is this future going to be like? What are those skills which would be required post pandemic and post fourth industrial revolution? Lots of studies have actually tried to pinpoint on those particular skills that would become extremely important and those which would be required to be done by human beings and not by machines. And most of them have some four or five skills in common. One is complex decision making. Second is critical thinking. Third is negotiation. Fourth is judgment and decision making. And fifth is cognitive flexibility. So all the studies have pointed out that at least these five skills are the ones which would be the top skills in demand. And therefore, our role as a teacher is going to change. Now, the COVID-19 has already thrown up challenges, which Vice Chancellor Varma spoke about, that classes have moved online. We are trying to actually teach. We are trying to use multiple pedagogical tools. However, there is a big need for developing the infrastructure at a massive scale. So I think so far as education is concerned, we would all need to, first of all, have a digital strategy, which we have never had. Once we have the digital strategy, the next thing that we need to focus on is how do we change ourselves as a teacher? So just to give you a very small example, uh, at, at I'm Indoor, for example, it took us just a week to move from in class to an online mode. But the point was that a lot of us, a lot of faculty were not very sure as to what online teaching would be like, because most people think that whatever you do in the classroom, if you go and do it in front of the computer, it becomes online teaching, hardly realizing that online teaching is a completely different pedagogical tool. So which means you have to reimagine the course itself. Since I'm Indore follows the case method and case method is not the one which is best suited to be delivered through the online mode. Therefore, we had to reimagine everything. And likewise, what we need to reimagine, and that's what I'm going to speak for the next five minutes, 
is how do we reimagine our role as teachers? Because remember one thing, by virtue of being a teacher, you automatically become a leader, you automatically become an influencer. And therefore, what I propose is that as a teacher going ahead in the post COVID economy, you will have to be in what I call the be, no, do framework. What you need to be is emotionally intelligent. You need to manage your own emotions and you will need to manage the emotions of your students. Very recently, I took a, an FB live session on how to deal with anxiety in this uh, COVID pandemic. And the kind of questions that came in were very amazing. I mean, it, it's not just the students who were anxious, but even the parents were anxious, even the adults were anxious. Some people were afraid about losing their jobs, the students were afraid about their future, so on and so forth. And therefore, anxiety is going to be at its peak. And as a teacher, when you are in an institution such as ours, where the students spend most of their time in the institution rather than with their families, your role doubles up as that of a parent as well. And therefore, you will have to be emotionally intelligent. Now, please remember that emotional intelligence is very different from emotional stability. More often than not, we talk about emotional stability being the hallmark of leadership, which means whether these are good times, whether there are bad times, whether there's happiness, whether there's sadness, we should not display any emotions. We should be completely immune to all emotions. Emotional intelligence is something very different. Emotional intelligence means that you should actually display the emotions which are expected out of you. So for example, you might be feeling sad while you're talking to students about something and while you're trying to pump up, pump them up about the future, but the expression that is expected out of you is that of happiness, is that of positivity. And this creates some kind of a cognitive dissonance because you're feeling one thing and you're required to express one thing. Your capability of actually getting over this cognitive dissonance is what is going to make you emotionally intelligent. So as teachers, we will have to become more emotionally intelligent as compared to what we are. So this is the B part. The second part is no. And here, I strongly urge you all to know yourself. Now, many people think, what do you mean? Of course, I know myself. I know my identity. I know who I am, so on and so forth. But please remember, there is something very tricky over here. And there is something which is philosophical about this entire thing called identity. So for example, I was introduced as the director of IIM Indore. So if somebody asked me, who are you? And I say, I'm Himanshu, the director of IIM Indore. Please note that this is my most superficial identity because it is drawn from the position that I hold. And if at all, you are drawing your identity from the position that you hold, please note, there is a chance that you will also start attaching your sense of self-worth and your self-esteem with that designation. And remember, the biggest challenge in that is that the day the designation goes, so will your sense of self-worth. And therefore, do not attach your sense of self-worth, do not attach yourself of identity, do not attach your sense of identity with the designation that you hold, be it the dean, be it the director, be it the HOD, be it the vice chancellor, anything. Do not attach your sense of purposefulness with your designation. So if you ask me, who are you? I'll say I'm a teacher or I'll say I'm a mountaineer because these are the two things from where I draw my real passion. And therefore, what you need to now know about yourself is that you are a teacher. Your job is actually to influence minds. And that is where you have to understand that you have a slightly larger role in the post pandemic world than you currently have. Why? Why has this pandemic happened? What is this pandemic sy symptomatic of? It is symptomatic of nothing but the ravaging that we have done to the nature, the ravaging that we have done to the environment. And when you start understanding your own self, you will also understand the universe around you. And you will also understand the relationship that you have with the universe around you. So as a teacher, it is your responsibility to make sure that you ensure that your students, your institution is in harmony with nature, is very conscious environmentally. And how do you do it? 
That takes me to the last part of the be, don't do framework. You do it by influencing people with your own ideals. You have to influence people through your own character, through what you do. Something I've been saying ever since I took over this uh, position as the director, that we as IMs have not done enough. And I think a lot of us, the good institutions in our country, we have not done enough. And why? One of the primary reasons I think we have not done enough is that we think that institutes are the places to create and disseminate knowledge. I think we have missed out on one important thing, and which is why I said that at least at IIM Indore, we are going to create, disseminate, and practice that knowledge. We seldom practice what we preach, and Parupadesh Kushal Bhautere, it's very easy for us to preach everything to the rest of the world, but it is very difficult for us to actually follow what we preach. So while we are talking about climate change, while we are talking about being in harmony with the nature, while we are talking about taking care of the environment, our own actions in the Institute at times are not in line with that. I'll give you some examples as to what we are trying to do at uh, I am Indore. So one of the things that we have done is that we are trying to look at that large population which lives in the rural areas so that we can understand their vantage point. I'm not too sure as to how many of you know, but of the 1.3 billion population that we have, 833 million people live in the rural areas. Vice Chancellor Varma spoke about the plight of the migrant workers. It's very easy for us to be talking about migrant workers sitting in conferences like these or in drawing rooms. But if you look at the plight and he brought it down as an important part that one would want to look at the future. And I think it's one of the most important part for the simple reason that we who have a slightly more privileged life, we owe it to those who do not have that because otherwise the inequalities in the world are going to extend so much that we will have a civil war at hand. So one of the things that we did was that as a compulsory part of the first year course, we take all our students and they, we make them stay in villages for one week. So an entire week, in groups of six, they stay across 106 villages of Madhya Pradesh. Not only do they look at the problems which are faced by the villages, but they also offer solutions and subsequently own up to those solutions in sense, even after they graduate, they make sure that they keep a tab on whether their solutions have been implemented by the district authority or not. The expansion that we are doing, we are making sure that it is a zero energy expansion since the entire energy, entire water, it would be self-sufficient. It will come from renewable sources. We are also going for a massive solar plant over here so that most of our requirements of energy are being taken care of by the uh, renewable energy. And just about a week back, what I realized was that when we shut our swimming pool, since we send our students suddenly home and the swimming pool is not going to be functional, I realized that there is so much water which would otherwise go waste or will need to be drained out. So what we did was we are pumping out that water every day and we are using that to water the plants within the campus. Now, what message am I trying to give here? Unless you start doing that as a teacher, unless we start doing that as an institution, we will not be able to influence our students to get ready with the post COVID world. And therefore we have to change and the change has to become now. And in here, I want to just conclude by saying that please remember the past may have belonged to those leaders who did things well, but the future is going to belong to those leaders who not only do things well, but also do the right things. So thank you very much. Congratulations to the organizing team and a very hearty welcome to all the FDP participants. I hope you have a great time for the next couple of days. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Rai, for the stimulating address, emphasizing importance of technology-enabled learning. I'm happy to inform that just like I am indoor, in this FDP also, we have some case study-based exercises and presentations. I thank you for taking this time to deliver this inspiring address.